Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I want to ask you to stay to your feet, and if you would, uh, do this. Why don't you go by and shake each other's hands and hug each other's legs and welcome each other to the house of the Lord, and let's be ready to worship the Lord this morning, okay? Oh. amazing, amazing thing. And I know we have some people who are prepared for baptism, but let me just go ahead and tell you, uh, if the Lord lays it on your heart, even if you haven't come prepared, um, and I will be, I'm going to share a word a little bit later on, um, that if, if you feel like getting baptized today, the baptistry is open. The baptistry is open, and, and you just never know what God will do, so allow yourself to be open to this. Um, also, um, we have um, on Tuesday, our blood drive. Now, all of our 38 slots are filled up. There will probably be some people who don't. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a full day of, of blood 
donations. If you have some free time and you'd like to come and volunteer and, and help during that day, um, you know, it's one to five. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, people that will be signing in for the blood drive. And so it's, it's an important thing. And it'll be amazing if we get end up with 30 people who are able to get blood. You will, it, it'll help 90 people. That'll help 90 people. And now, um, now the, the numbers are just astounding how many people have given blood in the last three years here at the church. But, um, but I can tell you, the people here at the church have helped over 1,000 people in the last three years. But, but I think you'll give the Lord a hand clap of praise. What does that have to do with the ministry? I think helping people is part of the ministry of the church. And if, they, if it's helping people with blood, Donations. It is a. It's an amazing, wonderful thing, and we're just glad that we're able to participate and be a part of that. And then um, we have some ladies who are on their way home from ladies retreat. Just be in prayer for them that they uh, uh, they had a great time of retreat. Heard of some amazing, amazing services that they had. So be in prayer for them. And then this week on Thursday they will be leaving to take the kids to Kid Fest. And before they leave, in fact, we're going to pray for them today. We're going to bless them, and, and we're going to believe for God to touch them and minister to them over the over the Kid Fest next week. A lot of things going on. But then next Sunday, um, we're going to just let you know something. That next Sunday evening, um, we're going to, if anybody wants to go with us, uh, there's a revival in Osceola, at the Osceola Church of God, that uh, we've been invited to, to, to come over and to be a part of that evening at 6 o'clock. And so we'll, if anybody wants to go and ride from the church or the church van over there, we're going to be leaving here at 5 o'clock next Sunday. Um, somebody, many of you know, Sister Linda Brewer, is going to be a revival over there. And Sister Linda is a great, great evangelist, a great person. And, uh, and the pastor over there, um, Brother Inman, has become a real true friend. And, uh, and so... Um, that'll be next Sunday evening. We're going to leave here at the church at 5. Of course, many of you already know where it's at, but certainly if you want to go over there for that, we want to encourage you to be a part of that. And again, um, we'll let, let you know some more stuff on that as, as it comes across. Uh, and uh, we appreciate the opportunity to partner with, um, with the Osceola Church of God. And it's not very far away for us to be able to partner with them in revival. And I think it's a great thing for us to be able to participate with them. And I know it'll be it'll bless Brother England to know that we are, are in support of that. But we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and ask God to touch us. And then as we pray, we also want to worship the God, the Lord, with our giving and tithes and offering. And as God has tremendously blessed us, and isn't it wonderful to know that you're blessed by God? That you're blessed and that God allows you to be able to give and God allows you to be able to, to the opportunity to, to give to Him and and to minister unto him. This is giving is a way we get to minister to God. And that's and, and he ministers to us. And so um, we're going to do that as actually pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity as always to come into your house, dear God. Lord, as we come in this time of prayer, dear God, Lord, we want to first of all start with praying, dear God, asking your Lord for you just to touch everybody in this place. God, touch everyone, dear Lord, that's even traveling right now, dear God, that, that there are the ladies on their way back, dear God, that you would touch and minister to them, dear God. And thank you for them being able to have this weekend, dear God, of ladies retreat, that you've ministered to them, dear God. Lord, we also pray, dear God, for the peace of Israel right now, dear God. We just pray, dear Lord, that you, the peace and protection of Israel, dear Lord, that, 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 that Lord, you just reign supreme, dear God, over the nation of Israel. God, we thank you for that, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, that you would minister to those who need it, dear God. If there's anybody today that doesn't know you as their Savior, dear God, we're just believing for amazing things to happen. Dear God, we believe amazing things are going to happen during water baptism today. We believe amazing things are going to happen in the lives of, of your people, dear Lord. God, as we give, we want to give amazingly, dear God, and honor to you, dear Lord, that you have blessed us so tremendously. It's our opportunity to minister to you. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to give. Thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, would you just take the time and let's worship the Lord with our giving.
think I just about lost my breath on that. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Philip. Uh, go have an alka <laughs> You can taste it. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. God is so good to us. I, I want to talk to you this morning, continue. Amazing things. I believe that God has, I don't just believe it, I know that God has amazing things for us. Last week, we talked about the amazing race. In other words, what it means to walk with God and the amazing things. Week before that, we introduced the, the amazing things and believing God as he's spoken that there would be an explosion, a uh, dynamite in what he does in our lives. Today, I want to talk to you about the amazing chase. Did everybody say the amazing chase? How many of you ever played chase in your life? I was the worst chaser ever growing up. I wasn't very fast, and uh, and, and I was you know, when you played chase, you know, you would tag somebody and things like that. And I was always the one who lost at that. But I've learned over the years. I may not have been good at that as a child, but I am really good at chasing. Last week I shared with you a little bit about it. Um, and my wife's not here today, so I can't embarrass her public, but I will embarrass her while she's watching online. I'm sure she's watching right now. She's uh, driving. And, uh, and so, the, um, you know, what we found out, what we discovered is I chased her until she caught me. And so that, that's how that worked out in life. And, uh, but there is a, it's kind of the chase with God. And I just want to cover the scripture that, that's our base for this message series that I'm doing. And next week, let me, let me just, before I get into this, next Sunday is going to be incredible as we collect the Amazing Things series. I'm going to be talking about the amazing things, the amazing blessings. I believe in blessings and praying blessings and speaking blessings. And there's a power of God that gives us the ability to see blessings take place. But the Bible says in Joshua chapter number three, it says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you. How many of you be okay if you knew that God was going to do some amazing things in your life tomorrow? Well, if you get tomorrow, I believe that God's going to do amazing things. I believe he gives you amazing things today. I believe that God is a God that every day we get is an amazing day from him. And it's such a blessing. But as we continue this, I want to share with you the importance of becoming an amazing chaser of God, or a God chaser. If you've ever read the book that came out about 25 years ago by Tommy Tenney, God Chasers, it was a book that shared the experiencing God in a different way, that the, how you could experience God. And it was, it was such a great book, and I would encourage you to read it if, you, if you've never read it. It's such a powerful book, um, and, and by, by a powerful, outstanding author. And, and it's such a blessing. But what did it mean, a God chaser? What does that mean, a God chaser? A, a, a God chaser is an individual who hungers and exceeds his reach. See, that's, that's, that's what a God does. That's what God changes. Their hunger exceeds their reach. Have you ever had a hunger for something that exceeded what you could actually reach for? That's what, that, that's what it is. You know, there are things that you say, oh, that's just out of my league. I, I, I can't get that. I want it badly. I, I can't get it. I want, I want that badly. I can't get it. And, 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 and you know, it's, it's a desire. It's some, maybe it's a, a thing that you would like to own and it's out of your price range, you know. Maybe, you know, and sometimes we, we do this with material things, and, and we should never be jealous over material things, but there are certain things that people like, I'm glad my mom was here today. I was glad to have her here. Back, back when I was a teenager, you see, we, we, we grew up, and, and, and mom and dad never wanted to deprive me of anything, but they also were very practical with things. And, and it was real popular um, when I was in high school, and, and, and it got popular. I don't know why it got popular, but it got popular. But, um, Levi's 501 button fly jeans got real popular again in the mid 80s. And, and so um, now, we, we, I like Levi's 501 button fly jeans. And I look at them, they like, weren't well, really that expensive. But I wanted jeans that were Levi's 501, but we were on a Kmart budget. And they didn't sell 501s at Kmart. And so, um, and so what they sold, I wanted 
follow on butterfly genes because that's what all my friends had in school. And the problem is, we can only afford wrestlers. Okay? I don't know how many of these kids, they don't know what wrestlers are. But they didn't butt and they snapped. And you couldn't have jeans in high school that snapped. You had to have jeans that button in high school. Some of you guys that are my age, you remember that. I don't know. I mean, Kenny, you remember that. Bubba, you remember that. And, uh, and, and so I went to mom and I said, I'm tired of wearing wrestlers. And she said, well, when you earn the money, you can buy what you want. Because we had a, I had a 501 part that I was chasing, but we had a wrestler budget. <laughs> so I thought, well, if Dad ever pays me to work on the farm, I know what I'm going to do. And that was already going to be a challenge getting paid because we were struggling. It was a challenge in life. I mean, listen, we went three years without having an air conditioner in the house. Um, I mean, and I don't, today people don't understand that, but we went three years without it and we survived. I, you know, my first car I ever had had um, had no air conditioning, had two windows down, 55 miles per hour. That was the two by 55 BTUs is what I had, okay? If I could go 55 miles an hour, that was a toy on a crew or something. And uh, I mean, that, that, I, I would never buy one today without air conditioning because I had to go without it growing up. And, and but, but I was glad to have that car. Again, I remember I had a Toyota Corolla to sell. And I was on a Corolla to sell budget. But I wanted a Corvette. I had a Toyota come to her. You see, that you were chasing sometimes things that were out of your range. Now, when I did finally make some money on the farm, the first thing I did is I drove down to Osceola, to, 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 to the mini store in Osceola. I, I can't remember the name of it. Was Silver Fields or something like that. Is that, the name? Is that right? Silver Fields? I went to Silver Fields. They had Levi's 501 Butterflies for $19.99. And I bought my first pair of Butterflies. I bought them for myself because I had chased it and chased it and chased it and I got them. <laughs> and to this day, I still wear Levi's. That's, I'm still Levi's. I got Levi's on right now. <laughs> I'm a Levi's guy. I'm not wearing Russell's. I'm not wearing Wranglers. And I'm not wearing Lee's. I'm wearing Levi's. That's what I want. That, 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 that's my desire. I told Tony when, when I go, I want to make sure she buries me in Levi's. <laughs> or cremates me in Levi's. However it goes, it doesn't matter. You know, we got we got robbed on our on our honeymoon. Somebody broke into the van. And we were in my father-in-law's van. They busted the window out, broke in the van. And the biggest disappointment, they, they stole Tommy's purse. I had $120 cash in it. The biggest disappointment, they stole my, my stonewashed uh, gray Levi 501 jeans that I bought at Silverfields. Never got those back. We can make all the money back, but I can't find those jeans anywhere. If I look on eBay, they're not there. But that's what happened with Chase. But when we begin to chase after God, chase after God is when you want to press into His presence and you believe that the impossible things in life can happen because you had a walk with God. That a certain moment can happen in your life. I, Paul said it this way in Philippians chapter 3. He said, I chase after that I may catch that which apprehended me. And that's what I mentioned to you earlier. You know, so what it is is I'm chasing after God, but God's apprehending me. And that's what the great chase is about. God is just allowing us to chase, but He's the one reaching out for us. It's like a parent playing chase with their child. And if you've ever played chase with your child, you ran around the yard while your kid was chasing you, and you turned around and you grabbed them and picked them up. One of the great things that I've got to do with all three of my kids and brought me closer to them, they may not have been, they, they may not have been able to catch me, but they would run and run and run until I was able to catch them, and that's what happens with our walk with God. But the Bible gives us examples of people who were who chased after him, who had the great chase in their life. Job, who went through the worst of the worst, the most difficult of the difficult. He said this in Job 23. He said, oh, that I knew where I might find him. Even in the depths of his suffering and the depths of his loss, Job still wanted to find God. In other words, no matter what you go through in life, you still should be chasing after God. No matter how bad things 
sin. You can lose all your children. You can lose all your wealth. You can lose your health and still chase after God. David was one. He said this, my soul followeth hard after the Lord. He said, I'm not going after God just alone, but I'm going after God with everything I've got. Yes. The Apostle Paul said this, that I may know him. What a powerful thing it is to know that I can know God. I love what the Bible tells us in Jeremiah. The Jeremiah the prophet said this. He said, Don't brag about all the stuff you've got. Don't brag about, don't brag, brag about the, 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 the power that you have. Brag that you know God. See, the only thing you can brag about in life is that you know God. He's the only thing worth bragging about in your life. You see, the passionate path of people who will chase after God can be traced across from passages of history from Moses the stutterer to David the singer and Paul the itinerant preacher to contemporaries today that are in our lifetimes like A.W. Tozer, Leonard Raymond Hill, and countless others who share one common bond, an insatiable desire to hunger to know the Lord. Is that what you have? Do you want to hunger and really know God? Because if you really want to know God, you will find Him. These people that we look at, they, they are relentless. But don't just look at them. Examine yourself. You know what? You can be just as relentless as they were. God has made you just as special as these people. You're just as important as Moses. You're just as important as, as David. You're just as important as the Billy Brams that, that lived on this earth. You're as important as any of them. And so if you want to know God, you can. The amazing chase. It's a hunger thing. Everybody say a hunger thing. A hunger thing. I know it gets close to lunchtime as we, get, as, as we get near the end of service and, and people start getting hungry. Have you ever, have you ever had hunger where you were in a room that was quiet. Now, now, one reason I don't like being Pentecostal is we don't have to be quiet, okay? <laughs> because I'm one of these people that my stomach growls when I get hungry. Anybody stomach growls? Uh, one of the most embarrassing things is when you're in a school classroom and, and everything gets quiet and, and it's near lunch and, and, and your stomach starts growling and the people next to you say, oh, their stomach's talking to us. <laughs> you ever heard that right? Their stomach's talking. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, what, what happens? You, your stomach starts growling because what? Because you're hungry. I don't see everything. I wish that preacher would just be quiet. I'm ready to go eat lunch right now. <laughs> well, I'll be quiet, man. You, you don't take time to eat today, okay? Plus, you're going to wait until all the other folks that, that get out of church early get done. That way you can go after them. You got to do like wait in line, all right? And say, so, or you can do, or you can cook for yourself or use your microwave. But we have that we have those hunger pains. We have those hunger pains that, and, 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 and and we want to fill them with hunger pains. Well, there's that time in your life you get hungry for something that you just got to have. Is there ever is there ever anything in your appetite that you just got to feel? I, I mean you just got to feel I mean, I, I, I get this desire every now and then for me, I get a desire every day at around five o'clock to have chicken. I do. Every single day around 5 o'clock, I get a desire to have chicken. And, 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 and about 5 o'clock every day, I have chicken. I do. And it's, I'm a very simple person. It's, it, and my, my appetite's very simple. But I have that desire to eat chicken. Thank God for John Tyson, Brother Ken. I'm going to eat more chicken now ever since Cattle Perry's came to be our coach. I'll do whatever I can to pay him. And so we, we, we get that, we, I have that desire. I have that, some of you, oh, you're thinking, man, I just can't wait to go and have, 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 have some of that buffet that, that Brother Alton was telling us about earlier today. You know, about, about a buffet. You go to a buffet and you like buffet. Who, who in here likes buffets? Oh, don't be ashamed to admit it. You like buffets? Right. Yeah, I mean, you like buffets? You want to go to a buffet? Whether that buffet is that Chinese buffet or whether you go to that buffet that, that they have at that, at that Grecian and Dyersburg. Well, that's a good one, isn't it? Or they have that, I heard some people say amen, but that, that, oh, I think I can just drive 45 minutes to go there, right? Yeah. I mean, you have that, and you have that, and you have that say, you get that design, oh, I know they're going to have on that. Some people, I wonder if they have some red pudding on there. 
I don't like bread pudding, but some of you look like you like bread pudding. And, and some of you, I want some bread pudding. Or, or for me, man, this, do, do, do they have something with chocolate in it? Well, if they got some chocolate, I get that desire. It's a hunger that you get. And you get to have it. Well, we should have that spiritually. When you want amazing things, and for me, my hunger lately, it hasn't been about the food that I can consume in my mouth, but I've been having this hunger for God's amazing things to see what God can do, a true hunger for God. That's it, I want to draw closer to Him. I want to experience Him more. And here's what the Bible tells us. It says that for He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness, in other words, they hunger and thirst after God. He says, they will be filled. Just like you'll fill yourself up with food, you can fill yourself up with God. And have you ever been so hungry for God that you just didn't have enough of Him? He said, I've got, what I, I've got this experience, God, and I want more. I just want more of God. He said, that's where we want to be. I want to be at this place where I'm never satisfied with my walk. I want to keep hungering for God. Not because I'm a glutton, but because I want to know Him more. Know more about Him. I want to know everything I can and experience everything I can. Yeah, I've been serving God for 36 years, but I want more. Yes. Not got enough. I've been pastoring 26 years and I want more. It's a hunger. It's chasing after Him. And it's really not just about experiencing miracles and signs and wonders. It's not about that. I'm not chasing signs and wonders. I'm chasing after God. Amen. Yes. I want Him and I want my relationship with Him. I want to experience Him more and more. And those signs and wonders, they'll follow but then that amazing chase is not just the hunger, and there's the seeking. Here's one thing you need to know. Everybody needs to know this. You, every single one of you, the apple of God's eye. You ever told somebody they're the apple of your eye? You look at a little baby, and you hold that little baby, and oh, you're the apple of my eye. I held every, all three of my children. I got to hold all three of them before my wife ever got to hold them. And every one of them was the apple of my eye. And even today, I can't, I can't hold any one of them. I can't pick any of them up because uh, we're both all we can't even if they're bigger than me. And, and, and it's so late, but, but they're all still out of my eye. I mean, my, my, my sons, I, I, I have one son that's um, that's about to be 32. I have one that just turned 30. I have, I have a daughter that's about to be 25. And, and I still see them when they're babies. When I, and I see, I, I still review holding them in my hands and and oh, you're the apple of my eye. I pray for you. I pray for you before you were born. I pray for you before you were conceived. I pray for you. Um, and I pray for them the rest of their life. And all those prayers are still going. And they're the apple of my eye. Well, that's the way God looks at us. He says, you're the apple of my eye. But here's the cool thing. Here's the, when it comes to seeking God. Not only am I the apple, not only are you the apple of God's eye, I want him to be the apple of my eye. And that's what seeking God is about. God, I, I want to turn this thing around. And I want to make you the apple of my eye, God. Why? Because when I seek you, dear God, then I know that you're going to exceed every prayer. I know that you're going to give every opportunity. I know that you're going to bless everything. You're going to bless every step that I take because I'm seeking you. And God, you're the apple of my eye, too. Yes. You know what I find this? You never know when or how God's going to invade you. In your life when you seek him. But if you'll make it routine to pray, if you'll make it a routine to pray, then your life will never be routine. If you'll make it a normal habit to pray, your life will never be normal. But it'll be above normal. In Acts, the Bible says this he prayed regularly. How do you seek God? You pray regularly. Well, you eat regularly, don't you? You want you seek that food, you seek you seek that nourishment. You eat regularly, right? Most of you eat at least once a day, right? Then you should pray regularly. And I suppose perhaps we should pray every bit as much as we eat. Think about it for a moment. I heard this statement yesterday. Former pastor, he's passed away now. Somebody, um, he was at a restaurant. And I never thought, I never heard it thought this way. And 
pastor at the restaurant and before he ate, he, they brought the food out to him and he sat down with the family and they, and they prayed and they, they said, they asked God to bless the food and God, we ask that you bless them. They're getting ready to eat. He said, we're going to take time to pray before we eat. And somebody over there walked up to him and said, brother, they said, well, you don't have to pray over that food. You've been praying at church and praying all that stuff. And he said, he said, you don't have to be praying over that food. He said, no. He said, I don't. He said, I can be like my dog. He just throw the food out and I start eating. <laughs> or he said, I can serve God and I can sit down and I can bless it before I sit down and have my meal. I can have a meal with God, too. That's right. See, he wasn't just blessing his food. He was letting his prayer be part of his food. Let his prayer not be part of it. And I got to think about it. You know what? I watched my dog. How many of you ever watched your dog eat? I don't eat like that. I don't eat like that. My dog started at 5.30 in the morning barking and let me know. I mean, I, I thought it was just when I started shooting No, at 5.30 in the morning, I started barking and waiting on their food. And, 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 and I take food out with them. And, 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 and I mean, they, they, they jump on me. They, 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 they want to come after me for the food. And, and I put... I put Copper's food in his bowl, Bear's food in his bowl, Susie's food in her bowl, and I watched them eat. And you know what? They they don't eat like people. They eat like dogs. (laughs) They eat every bit of it at once. It is is unbelievable. And after one of them gets done, they go and see if the other one's got any food that hadn't finished. They're going to get in that pile too. (laughs) Now, I go and I will eat with family members and stuff like that. When I get done eating, I don't go out and I'll move out of the way. I'm going to finish yours up for you. <laughs> Tell my kids, y'all didn't eat fast enough. I'm going to finish yours up for you. No, I don't do that. I'm a man. I'm a person. I'm not a dog. I'm not, I, and so when I talk to God, I want to talk to God in that relationship. I want to, whether it's with my food or whether it's with, you know, I want to pray to God and talk to Him every bit as much as I spend time eating. And fill in this flesh. Because if we don't ask God, God will never answer us. And we've got to have that, that seeking. And when he, when we pray, you want to find out when you pray, God will fight your battles for you. So you need to try seeking God. And, and, and instead of trying to fight all your battles yourself and solve all the problems yourself, see what God can do. So, so we're going we're to have a hunger thing. Then we're at a seeking God thing. But if you're at an amazing chase, you got to have an asking thing. Everybody say ask. Yes. Did you know we have two intercessors in life? I don't know there are other people who have a spirit of intercession. But there are two intercessors. The two intercessors are the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I mean, that, that's the two intercessors we have. And I have learned this, not to ever be afraid to ask God. Because... Right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father is Jesus Christ, His Son, your Savior. He said that for those of you getting baptized today, listen. He's your Savior. You're testifying about Him being your Savior. You can ask Him anything. And He's sitting by God, and He's going by the Father. He's saying, Listen, Danny Pinky's asking this. Ron Regan's asking this. He, he, he's sitting there. He's sitting there thinking, he, he, he's, he, he's sitting there saying that 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 that, that you're asking this or whatever, and, and he's pushing for you. Then you have the Holy Spirit who's interceding for you while in your presence, and so you, you can you can ask anything of Him, and we should be. And you know, I I I, I started. Here's one of my prayers I'm asking, and I want you to start asking things like this, church. And this is how I'm asking God. I, I said, Lord, I want you to surprise me. God, surprise me with some of the things you do. Sometimes we just get used to God doing things a certain way at a certain time and we can predict God. But you know, we can't predict God. God's too big for us to predict Him. Back in 2007, when former governor of Arkansas, Mike Huckabee, was running for president, they asked him the question. They were in a debate. They said, "Mr. Huckabee," they said, "They said you're a you're a you're a you're a Southern Baptist preacher. You should you must know everything there is to know about God." And he says, 
If I knew everything that there is to know about God, I need to find me a bigger God. I need God to still surprise me. I need God to surprise me with things. And for some of you, He may surprise you by healing you of your sickness. He may surprise you by healing your kidneys. He may surprise you by healing you of cancer. He may surprise you by healing you of your, of your, of your diabetes. Listen, don't be afraid to ask Him to heal you of something that you've had for a long time. What's wrong with asking? Well, I'm just used to taking this medicine. I'm just, I'm ready to, I, I, it doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't mean you can't ask. Mm -hmm. I, you know, why not? What do you have to lose by asking God? And meaning and believing it. Mm -hmm. You know, trust God for big things. And here is why. Because nothing's too big for God. Everything is small for Him. So I want everybody for just a minute. I want you just to think for just a moment. Think about the biggest thing you're dealing with in life. And you know what I want you to tell it? Don't, don't tell me, don't call it out. This is a rhetorical question. What is the biggest thing you're dealing with in life? Now, as you think about that, I want you to realize no matter how big it is, God can take care of it. Yes. It may be too big for you, but that's okay. God surprises me when he does those things that are too big for me. Well, I have found out more and more. I depend on him for more and more, and I see him do more and more in my life. God is a God that answers in a big way, and I trust him for a big way. You know, with amazing chase reminds me of this always is to be desperate. I've heard people like that. People tell me, don't be desperate. But the Bible wants us to be desperate. God wants us to be desperate. Desperate times call for desperate. We are in desperate times today. The world is in desperate times. And there's a lot of people, and some of you have come in here discouraged about the desperate times that the world is in. But can I tell you something today, that on this morning, that, that even though the world is in desperate times, don't you forget that there's a God that's looking for desperate people. He's looking for people who are desperate for Him to answer them. We, we get in desperate times, and we as adults get in desperate times, and we start talking negative, and young people hear us talking negative about it, they don't think that the world's going to have any possibilities of getting better. But I want to tell you, young people that sitting right here, I want you to listen to this, and I want you to hear me, that no matter how desperate you are, no matter how bad you hear people tell about the world, God's bigger than any problem in this world, and that God can turn anything around, and that God is still good, and God wants to bless you. Yes. And don't you ever let anybody tell you any different. Because that's who God is. The God can tell you who is desperate for him. You may be in seventh grade, but God's got a life for you that he's going to bless you. I love seeing that smile. It's a good smile you got there. That, that, that God wants to bless you and he's going to do good things and expect God to do good things in your life. And you just because you hear people on TV and watch people on Facebook and things like that tell us, all the different stuff that the bad, bad things are. Start believing, God, you are turning this thing around because you want the world to be better for me. Yes. Isn't that what you want for these young people? Mm -hmm. Or are we just satisfied about complaining about how bad things are? Well, I may be 55 years old, and I'm, I, you know, I'm not ready to go ahead and give up on it because I, I still believe God has more for me. And so desperate times call for desperate measures. Well, desperate measures means I want to chase after God. Yes. God gets offended when I ask him to do stuff that I can do myself. But God gets excited when I ask him to do stuff that I could never possibly do, Brother Jerry. Um, yeah, if I can go out and, and, um, and, and fix my car, I don't really have to ask God about it, do I? But if I have a car that there's no hope for it being fixed for the run, or no transportation for being fixed, I can circle that thing and say, God, however you want to do it, Amen. you can do it. And I'm believing you to supply the need, even though I have no way of supplying the need myself. And all of a sudden, somebody says, oh, by the way, I'm not going to take your money. I'm going to sign that car over to you and get it to you. Why? Because God does things that we can't do ourselves. That's who he is. 
That's what he does. Or that, or that you know, yeah, you can go and you can put a band-aid when you cut yourself. You've done that. I don't have to ask God to work on it when I cut my thumb and have to go put a band-aid on it. I cut myself shaving and have to put a band-aid on my face. But when I go to the doctor and at my physical, the doctor says, oh, let me tell you, things aren't right. Your blood tests come back off. And you know that there's no way that you can fix it. And by the way, you've got a disease that can't be cured. God's just itching for us and asking. God, can you help me? And I could be like that Syrophoenician woman that cried out, Lord, help me. And you know what? I find that he does it time and time again. When you're desperate, you'll do that. You'll wait for God to do amazing things and do amazing things in your life, in your family. Here's what we have to do. We have to start putting our plans on the altar. We have to start putting our families on the altar. We have to start putting our situations on the altar. We have to put our needs on the altar and see what God will do with it. I just want to tell somebody that you need to know this. The miracle that you're looking for is already in the house. And God's already in the house. And God can take care of you in this house. And then you need to start living in the holy anticipation of what God can do. Maybe you have dreams and visions that, that there's no way they can be done. You can't do this. This can't be done. Those are the kinds of dreams and visions you need to have. You don't need to have dreams and visions of things that you're already doing. Or you didn't hear me. You need to have dreams and visions in your life of things you could never possibly do yourself. Because if it's a God-given dream, Sister Margie, then it's something that I have to depend on God to take care of. I've got to depend on Him to do it. And it's not up to man. It is 100% up to God. Come to music, please, right now, if you would. It's 100% up to God. And if you're going to experience amazing things today or one day, you got to learn to seek God every day. It's got to be an everyday thing that you got to seek Him. In a few minutes, we're going to baptize. We're going to pray for some folks. We're going to do baptism. But this morning, as I was in my prayer time, as in my devotion time, the Lord spoke to prophetic for There are some people who have already planned to be baptized. But I'm speaking to the whole church here this morning. And I want everybody to listen. I want you to have an open heart and an open mind and an open spirit to this because this is a prophetic word God told me. First of all, I want to speak to Rural Road Church of God. I'm Rural Road Church of God. I want you to listen. When, for those who are traveling well, I want you to listen. I want you to pay attention to this. God told me to tell you this. He said, I want you to, before you do any back and before you do any this, I want you to, I want God, I want you to tell them this. He says, you, you have the potential. Rural Road Church of God. Talk about us. Talk about this church. You have the potential to help save a city and a community. Did you hear me? Yes. Praise the Lord. But you got to receive it. Yeah. You have the potential. Everybody say potential. Potential. You have the potential to help save a city and a community. Yes. yes. You have the potential to rise up and be a great light in this region. Mm -hmm. God didn't call us just to be satisfied with what we are. But he says there's potential mm -hmm. for you to be a great light in this region. You have the potential to influence leaders and direction for our community. I didn't have any plans of doing this, but this was confirmed to me yesterday. I was on my way to Memphis yesterday and I got a call from the president of an organization here in town. I didn't think nothing about it. I've done things like this before. But timing's always one thing. And they said, Pastor, are you planning on being at the 
Chamber banks are on Thursday. Yeah, I'm here. I got my tickets. So would you bring the invitation over there? Or for you, that just been, no, I just don't think this. I prayed over the chamber banker before, but you know, the, the chamber banker now is not just a wild chamber, it is the Mississippi County Chamber of Commerce. It is, it is for the whole county. It is the single largest event that takes place in the city every year. And Sister Jillian, God told me this morning that that's not just happenstance. They said, when you go in there, I want you to make sure it's circle prayer. We're going to circle prayer. I'm going to draw a circle. We're going to pray with boldness for our community. Why? Because God says, I'm going to give you a platform. He says, church, he's going to give this church a platform. And he wants you to know that he wants you to understand it's amazing things. You have the potential to influence. Nothing influences leaders and direction on the prayer. That's a way. But here's the key thing. He says you have the potential to reach the harvest in a huge way. In a huge way. For the Jerry, for the Roger, for the Ricky, some of you guys were here when this place was built. I don't know who all was here when this place was built, but some of you were here when this place was built. This stage is one of the largest stages in the Church of God in Arkansas. It's a large stage. I mean, side to side, it's large. You know, sit part of the sermon, part of the sermon, screen, large stage. God gave a word when y'all built this stage in. Y'all remember the word? I wasn't here. I have never dreamed at that time that I would ever be in this church. I wasn't called to preach at that time. But they said, for every male that goes in this stage, I believe. And over the last 36 years, a lot of that's come true, has, has happened. But for every male is a soul that's going to be saved through the ministry of this church. I understand that's what the word said. That was given to this church. Now I don't know, that's a little that's a lot of square for the stage. I don't know how many nails are in that thing, but there's got to be thousands of nails in this stage. It is solid. And I'm telling you that because the harvest is true, the harvest is real. And the harvest is in a huge way. And this city, more than ever before now, needs churches that have the potential to reach the harvest. And then the Lord said to say this to you, this is prophetic for the church, for the Lord church God. Church, your best days are ahead of you, not behind you. Don't believe in a lie, the devil says your best days are behind you. They're not. Your best days are in front of you. How does this happen? How does it happen? God says it's contingent. These are potential. But the contingent is there. Commit totally to God. Commit totally to real, sincere, praying, and hearing the voice of the Lord. And then do it. Then your potential becomes your future. The Lord told me to tell that to the church today. <laughs> Amazing things. Then he wanted me to tell those of you who are being baptized. Some of you are already selected, have already decided you're going to be baptized. And this, we're going to do this in just a few moments. And I've been questioning how, how, how we're going to do this. But the, now I know exactly what. But here's, here's what God wanted me to tell everybody that you've already submitted to being baptized. You're about to see God do amazing things in your future. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? You're about to see God do some amazing things in your future, those of you that are being baptized. You have great potential in you. And that, and that God is going to bring about a new work through you. Did you hear me? Those of you that are being baptized, even from the young ones, that God is going to do. They're not even in here yet.
There are some of you here who've been saved, serving God for many years. There's a prophetic word the Lord told me to tell you. He says that some of you need to submit to being baptized again. And see God do huge, amazing things in your life beginning today. There are going to be blessings in this for your few and for your family. That today, you are not just experiencing baptism for you, but for your family as well. Would you stand to your feet right now? That is a word for the Lord. It's a prophetic word. I don't say that lightly, folks. But it's a prophetic word from the Lord. Concerning what he wants to do both in this church and in you through baptism. We're going to, in just a few moments, we're going to, we're going to get ready. We're going to offer ourselves up for water baptism in just a few moments. And so if you've come prepared for it, and, and those of you that have already come prepared for it, I want you just to lift up your hands and say, Look, oh, God, I know that God's going to do something for me. I, and you just go, that God's already spoke, said he's going to do something for you. Go ahead and lift your hand and say, I've already received it. In the ahead of time, and then I receive it in the name of Jesus. And God, you're going to do something for me. But here it is. There's other people in here. You didn't come prepared to be baptized today. But God said, if you will submit to me, I'm already dealing with your heart. You know I'm dealing with you. If you can submit yourself to being baptized. You may walk out of here wet, but you're going to walk out of here seeing God do potentially great, amazing things in your future. That there are some new and mighty things for you that are going to happen. And I do, right now, I want you to begin praying. And you begin seeking God. And, and, and as you're doing that, I want to ask the kids, and I think they're bringing them in. They're going to bring them up here. They're going to be going to give this this week. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to pray. I want every one of them that are going there. And even adults that are going to give this, I want you to come down to this altar. If you're an adult one with kids, I want you to come. And we're going to pray over you in just a moment. I want you to come down to this altar. I want to pray for you. I want to pray a blessing over you. Because there's going to be some amazing things that happen. That it can be fun. It can be an enjoyable thing. And it should be enjoyable. But this is not about the fun time. This is about seeing God do some amazing, new, and special things in your life. Hey, y'all, y'all face me. I want you to face me. Turn around. Face me. There you go. Right there. Good. These guys are going to be on stage. All right. We're going to pray over you. We're going to pray over you. We're going to see God do it. Adults, if there's some moms and dads that are born to kids' fest, I want you to come down here too. Oh, yeah, I think we have some in the nursery right now. I'm like, it's a Heavenly Father, God, I pray for right now each one of these kids, each one of these adults who are born to kids' fest, dear God. Lord, we don't want this to be an ordinary kid fest. We want this to be something, dear God, that's extraordinary. That God, that, 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 that doesn't just, that, that doesn't pump excitement in, but that, dear God, has transformation take place, dear God. That there be a food, dear God, amongst the children and amongst the adults, dear God. That lives will be changed forever, dear Lord. That God, that when they come back, that the fire and the burden, dear God, to win others to the Lord, the fire and the burden, dear God, to touch people's lives. That, dear God, that, 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 that Lord, even these young people realize they can reach the harvest. That they can reach the harvest, dear God. I prophesy over these young people, dear God, that these young people are going to be people who win other young people to the Lord. Even in spite of difficult circumstances that some of them face in their families and their homes, dear God, they're going to win people to you in the name of Jesus. God, that you're going to give them influence and a voice in Jesus' mighty name. I bless it and I bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now, before we operate in baptism, dear God, I pray in the name of Jesus. For everybody that submits themselves, or God, to align themselves to be baptized today, or God, that you're going to 
Lord, you've already said what you're going to do, dear Lord, that you're going to do some amazing, incredible things in their lives, dear God. And that, Lord, that there's going to be a new, fresh anointing, dear God. And that, Lord, that they would go ahead and rely and trust in you, dear God, for what only you can do. Thank you, oh God, for your amazing, amazing, God, your goodness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, what we want to do, I want to if you're a guy, I want you to go over to this side right here. You can come in over on this door over here and take your stuff back. If you're a gal, you can go over on this, this door right here. And if, again, if you didn't come prepared to do it, but God lays it on your heart, you need to obey God because He's going to do some amazing things. But uh, gals, go through that door over there and get ready. We're going to be baptized. Sister Etah, go ahead and play some baptism song if you would. <laughs> Y'all go ahead and worship. Well, you can be seated.
Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll turn the glasses off. <laughs>
very proud of what God's been doing for me in life. She even was able to help us video last week. But we're also proud that she's going to grow and she's even asked about being part of the, um, the prayer study that I've been doing and she's already started studying that. And I believe God works in prayer. He's going really to work in her life. Me, we baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord. Oh, the swimming. Got the liver. God good. Yes. You stand your seat. <laughs> one of the young people was asking about baptism in Sunday school and um, they wanted to know more about it. If you don't know, um, you know about baptism, ask us. We want to share with you about it. But it's important. Baptism doesn't save us, but it tells everybody else we're saved. Yes. That's what it does. It's a great testimony. And we thank you guys for being a part of it. And, um, and, and and enjoy allowing us to be a part of this with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, dear God, for your wonderful blessings, dear God, that you give us. In the name of Jesus right now, dear God, I pray your blessings over these precious folks. God, that you would minister to them. And God, we know your word, the prophetic word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don't you love some people? Tell them you're glad you got to be in the house with us today.